Hello, everybody. It's Michelle Marie, the London North American Snow Queen. Of course, today is Thursday. And uh, I kind of wanted to duplicate Lumi's effect with the camera close up to her face. Because I thought, even though it's kind of a way, it's even in a video, it's kind of like in your face. Some people don't like it, some people do. Um, because it, uh, some people find it very uncomfortable. Um, the video from yesterday is still got to go through the rendering stage. And um, I fell asleep a little early last night, so I didn't get a chance to get mine uploaded. After I uploaded Lumi's, it took... Um, it takes a while to upload these videos because there's a, a double conversion stage to go through. The first stage is we import the videos into iMovie or Final Cut Express in this case. And then, then we remove the excessive leader and, and the trailer. And then we have um, the... Other stuff that comes with the video, such as adding things like, you know, titles, if there's titles added, or footers, and stuff like that. You know, almost every time you do raw video, there's always that raw video, okay? Which is, um, like right now, just before I came out here, I was putting away my portable washing machine, and you, know, you could probably hear the sounds of the clunks and stuff as I was getting ready to take the laundry and I dumped it into the tub to drain because it's already went through a certain rinse. And, um, that Chinese ringer, or I was, that Chinese wonder washer works fine. Well, unfortunately, some of the gaskets on it are going bad and, and so it tends to leave a little puddle. So we have a towel underneath it that we use. Um, it's just the best way to do it. It's not, the most glamorous machine it does the job um we've had it now for about almost 10 oh, oh my god almost 10 years now um so we've been we've been doing a lot of laundry with it and um and it works fine i didn't want to run to the laundry mat just to wash all my underwears and sock um underwears and the pink dress and the pink top not this one this is another one um uh, I, I just wanted to just get the stuff cleaned up really quickly because underwears I do go through. And I did find out there's one pair of underwears I actually find that's kind of nice. It's kind of stretchy, clingy. I don't know if it's what the story behind the brand is, but um, let's put it this way. It gives me uh, a very firm um, uh, control um, down there, so it's it's not a girdle. It's it's not intended as that, but it, it does provide some girdle function. So, um, and I also like the fact it goes all the way up and covers my nether regions very well, and and uh, and that's great. Now, last night's video, I'm going to cover some things regarding some other video topics we haven't talked about. Something um, regarding electrical um stuff i do a lot of videos out there for industrial testing of circuit breakers versus fuses i wanted to talk about circuit breakers and fuses for a while and express some concerns about the circuit breakers um i do have some standard household breakers laying around here because i do electrical work for my landlord i don't have them right now in my hand but there are in my in my junk junk drawer of my um utility closet the problem with circuit breakers um, is they are mechanical devices, and they um, are, because they are mechanical, they can fail. Um, one of my break landlords, Cutter Hammer Breakers, had failed in his um, one of his properties, and it would not turn on, okay, which is um, the least dangerous of the two failure modes, actually three failure modes, is it doesn't turn on, in other words, it just stays constantly tripped. And you can't turn it on. Um, that's the safer of the three failure modes. The second failure mode, which is really dangerous, is it won't turn off. Uh, if that happens, or the breaker, for either because it's it's not the right breaker for the circuit or whatever, and it doesn't turn off, overload condition exists. Um, you might as well just 
can say you don't have a circuit breaker at all and just basically realize you got a big giant short, which means that something is going to cause the water to heat up the wire itself, we'll like to fuse and, and create all kinds of nasty problems. Um, third failure mode, which is related to just general operations, is depending on the amount of a uh, short circuit can cause the breaker to explode. Now, I've never personally seen a household breaker explode. However, I have certainly seen some of the results of a circuit breaker that has not worked properly uh, in the form of failure mode one and failure mode two. I've never personally seen failure mode three, and I hope to God I never do. <laughs> because having a circuit breaker trying to do its job and basically give its life when a breaker is supposed to be He's terrible. Oh. And that's another thing that is, um, I think it was one of the tests was done by IEEE, um, was the st uh, standard circuit breaker, depending on the circumstances, may only be reusable for eight times um, on the severe overloads. So when that's the point, the contacts are so shot that there's nothing left of them. Um, also, it turns out that many circuit breakers do not protect as well as a fuse does. That's why I have fuses here. I don't have breakers in here. Oh, I have breakers in my power strips, but that wasn't my choice. It's just the way to me. In fact, you made them. But I have standard plug fuses here. Uh, non table or Type S um, delay fuses. A 20 amp fuse in my, uh, which feeds the whole apartment. It's an old building. What do you want? So shoot me, okay? No one's going to tell me that. She have a 20 amp fuse per room. Well, that would be great, but unfortunately, whoever made this building back in the wiring back in the 1900s didn't really think about that. After all, originally it was a residential hotel, and then there was a lot of other things that were going through the mind at the time. It was the days when they were converting from the gasoliers and the ceiling to electric lights, and there was just a lot of uh, non standard stuff because there was no standards. At least America had uses from day one, unlike it turns out that the UK didn't. I don't I cannot believe that. That's just that's the true story. Is that in the UK many ring mains did not have a fuse on the rings main circuit itself. That was kinda of changed back in the fifties. Whereas that was kind of always the way it was for the United States since the beginning of electrical standards. Um, even Thomas Edison created a fuse for that exactly for that reason. He knew that we needed to protect overcurrent devices. And I don't know why the British people didn't think of that until later, but that's that's not the point. Um, I just tend to think the fuses are better. I mean, they they give their lives to protect the circuit, and they do a great job if properly sized. A fuse will blow long before. The damage to the wiring, where a circuit breaker, uh, the IEEE test show will just not protect anything. It does not provide level three protection. It doesn't even really provide level one protection, turns out. Whereas a fuse is much likely to provide level three, if not more, protection in both um, high current and low current applications. They demonstrated in a situation where a uh, a fast acting, a slow blow standard um, glass cartridge fuse is being used in a uh, situation using a solenoid, say, actuator for a motor or something like that, and demonstrates why it's recommended to use a type or non or time delay fuse in certain circumstances and a non time delay fuse in other circumstances. Um, my apartment happens to have non-tamperable type S time, um, time delay plug fuses. So I don't really have a problem with them. And in fact, I've only blown a fuse like once really within the last four years. And that was because I tried to turn on an air, two air conditioners and the TV and the stereo and it was just too much for and then the refrigerator kicks on and that just overloaded the circuit and the fuse melted and that is job. Okay. So um, ever since that time, I've been trying to make sure not to overwhelm my circuit. For example, since I only have a 20 amp fuse for all the 120 volt circuits, we have, um, I 
did something similar to what they do in Green Acres. I know it's going to say, well, that's a TV show. It's not real. Well, the recommendation about adding up the amps does work. If I know, for example, these two lights are 600 watts. Um, that's um, 600 watts divided by 120 is 5. So that's a 5. My laser printer is a 5. The computer in that room is a 6. So a 6 and a 5. I can use these lights or the laser printer. I can't have both. If I turn the 6 on and the monitor is a 2, that's 7. Okay? And then you have the 7. And, uh, and then I turn on the lights. Okay? So that's 5. 7, 4, six. So that's 5 and 17 is 12. That means there's enough current for running the refrigerator when it starts up because it's in rush on the compressor and uh, of course the, the mixer and, and the amplifier stereo is is like a two so you still got just barely enough juice to run everything uh well danger of blowing a fuse so and yes i have used my air conditioners with one air conditioner with in the studio with the lights on but then i unplug the refrigerator so that the air conditioner gets um first dips because it's an induction motor it takes a 400 percent uh in, in rush current to start up so you want to make sure to give it the 400 percent so that there's no uh um failure of the fuse and because it's in the basement and i don't have a key to the basement my landlord does so uh even though i keep extra fuses up here i have to get go down to the basement to change it out um we're circuit breakers, like I said, we've I replaced plenty of breakers for my landlord. We've recently reset plenty of breakers too. Um, the circuit breakers um, do not necessarily provide that kind of protection that the fuse does. In the sense, a fuse is so simple; it's perfect for the Kiss philosophy. Keep it simple, stupid. A fuse basically melts. That's all it does. It gives its life. For the one time it needs to. It doesn't sit there and ask for a redemption. Um, every time I've had overall conditions with fuses in the circuit, they properly did what they were supposed to do. Every time I had circuit breakers in the circuit, I've had breakers that had not tripped. I have had breakers that tripped too soon. I've had breakers that just didn't even do what they were supposed to do. Um, and... And of course, the contacts get pitted and burned out, and and then you just get to replace them anyway. And plus, that's fine. But the there's there's a a bazillion breaker manufacturers. So well, maybe not a bazillion, but there's a couple here in the United States here, and uh, and some of the breakers are are not interchangeable. I can't buy, for example, a general electric breaker and put it in a square D panel. I cannot put a square D breaker and put it into a, a general electric panel. Um, I can put because I found out I was lucky. I can put a square D into a cutter hammer panel, but I can't put a cutter hammer breaker into a square D panel because the square D panel has little tiny little clips in the cutter hammer uses a leverage bar, which turns out to be very interesting. Actually, you sure you can't put it in there? I don't have a square D breaker right now, a uh, cutter hammer breaker to try right now in the square D panel block, but yeah, I don't think so. Okay, um... The point is, is that um, when it comes to electrical safety, I am very concerned about things, especially for the uh, majority of Americans and people in the world are not too savvy. Uh, My girlfriend got this charger. uh, She bought it locally from a retailer. And she comes to me um, with her at dinner. At uh, we eating out dinner, she's got plugged into the mains outlet at the at the restaurant. She says this thing is getting very hot. I said, let me see that thing. I said, you know, I don't think it's a safe idea to use this thing. I said, this thing is way too warm for what you're draining on it. If that thing does not have an adequate power supply, or worse, if there's something wrong or failure mode where the high, because it was so clamped, so cramped together, everything was so small, it was a little cube charger. I said, I don't even know this manufacturer. I don't see any UL type acceptance on it. Um, I don't feel you should be using this charger. But I need to charge your phone. Well, I said, well, I got a regular Samsung charger laying around the house that plugs in with this cord. She liked this cord. It was purple and it was cloth covered. 
All right, fine. I give her, so I give her another charger to use. Um, and uh, she still got the other dangerous one. I really got to get it back from her and just basically just take it to bits and find out why is that thing getting so hot. Uh, I got a hunch just like Big Live showed with a couple of Chinese chargers. It's probably got all kinds of nasty, dangerous stuff in there. <laughs> I'm going to have to just tear it, just tear it to bits and find out what's going on. Um, the sad truth is, is that it's very common. It's a, it's, is it the seller's fault? Well, of course, some, no, I don't think the, the local retailer even really knew about it. A lot of people don't. You know, uh, it's not like if this guy was an electrical engineer and he, or electrical trained and he had a uh, new to look for type acceptance, he might be very uncomfortable selling that adapter. Uh, he might sell the USB cable, but he may not sell the charger and say the chargers are too dangerous and tell a supplier that he doesn't want any more of those chargers. I would do it. Uh, get, you can make good chargers, um, but unfortunately, any almost anything from China, especially when it's really cheap, and you know what I mean with cheap, I'm talking about dollars and cents here, or at least dollars and cents to manufacture it, is when he starts cutting corners and making them tinier and smaller, especially then things get really, really critical. Um, if you make it too small, it can arc over, and you can have all kinds of nasty surprises. So, personally, I would recommend... Um, in that circumstance, just forget the small, tiny micro size. I'd rather have a charger that's safe, uh, has a good design, and it's not going to potentially um, either catch water or explode, or worse, electrocute me or anyone I know and my girlfriend I want to live and have a long and healthy life. So, you know, I really want her to be happy, but I don't want to see her end up becoming becoming a big giant filament for an unexpected light bulb, you know. Um, so, I, I've i been thinking about some of the stuff that Big Glide's been showing, and I've been saying to myself, is, why doesn't someone design a good quality, small, 5-volt linear power supply? Now, I know what you're going to say, but 5-volt linear power supplies are going to have a have our transformer... It's going to be heavy. It might not be voltage agnostic. A fin but voltage. Oh, okay, that's a problem. Yeah, uh, most transformers are not voltage agnostic. Um, and they are going to, um, you know, have, as I said, they're going to be weigh a lot more. They're going to be heavier. Um, however, a good well-designed transformer is going to be, especially if it's designed by a company with proper types of acceptance, is going to have a high separation but, um, between the low and high volts, primary and secondary, and it's going to make sure that there's no way that the primary voltage is, is going to flash over to the secondary. It's cheap Chinese stuff. I can't tell you if that's even got that all in there. Um, because when you try to cram all these components in the I got little chargers like that, but I don't have one. I take out one from Dory. It's kind of similar to the one that she had. And I got one of my own, which I trust because it's a new brand Apple charger. Uh, yeah. The difference between this and the other charger that she showed me is that hers had a USB port on the back. Okay. And this one here says you well listed. Now underwriters laboratory may not exactly be the most biggest deal for safety, but this one here is definitely a very nice switch mode power supply. It doesn't tell me who makes it? Says it's you will approved. And. God. Rating is really small. It is a universal voltage adapter. So. Um, unfortunately, the problem with this thing is. This micro USB connector um, is not making good contact. 
Now, we did say we talked about the micro and the standard connectors. I, I don't have the other one here. But here's the micro USB connector. Might as well show you this. Um, you can see it's small. And the way my girlfriend tends to probably yank them out of the wall is not the way I do it. I grip the plug and I remove the plug. A lot of people tend to grip the wire. It's bad enough if, if you trip over the wire. And I think that's how this originally got kind of damaged when I tripped over the wire. That happens. The wires are very, th very small and here, very thin. Um, this is an apple type cube. I think this is a genuine apple adapter. Except it doesn't say apple on it. Um, I could take it apart. I'd rather not, because it's, it's pretty reliable. I like this one. Um, it, um, what I look for when I, when I buy cables is I look for um, a variety of things. I look for the kind of cable. If it's got a bigger, thicker cable on it, you know, how's the connectors on it. If it's too thin, this is good. I don't mind this wire. This is similar to what my iPhone kind of cable was in my iPhone, which is this four-wire rubbery slick thing that originally came with the Apple charger when I got my iPhone. Um, I don't like this kind of wire. It's really, really thin. It's like tinsel. It doesn't hold up. It just breaks. Um, it does work. I tested it, but unfortunately, it's not making good contact. And so it doesn't always charge. So, yeah. Now, so... What I would do with my with my other girlfriend's other charger when it's overheating is I would just take that thing and crack it open. Take the little PC board out. See how it's probably like this one had like this one. I know this one does have this. This one's got two little individual boards inside. It's not much different in length. In fact, here's the funny thing. This Apple power supply is even smaller than this thing. See? Um, and... Them is just kind of interesting in the way the pins are. Um, but what I, I think is safety, I, I really do feel adamantly it is important to protect your loved ones, especially. And if you have any electrical sense, um, you definitely. Oh, yeah, by the way, let's talk about the proper way to store these cords because I. I keep running into this. Um, if you can... The heaviest thing is the charger. Okay? You really don't want to go any tighter than that. Okay, if you do, the wire in this is, like I said, is like tinsel. This stuff will just, will just shred. Okay? This one here is a little heavier. Again, I still kind of got it wrapped up. Nicely. Let the, let the wire curl itself up. Okay. Um, it's there's so many things out there. Trying to make sense is great, and there's some things that trying to make sense is just downright nasty. Um, and just as there are some simple technologies that are safer, better, and more reliable, we're talking about breakers and fuses earlier. Um, I would never, if I was building a house, I don't care. How many people's teeth they have to rip out to do it? I would make sure that I would have uh, fuses in the house. Um, you know, standard type or type S fuses in the house um, for all circuits. Or if you want to have 120, if you want to have cigarette brick load centers underneath the fuses, that's fine. But I really rather have the fuses than the breakers um, because of safety. Um, I don't feel comfortable with breakers at all. I never liked them. I never liked them even when I was a kid. I still didn't like breakers as a kid. I used to hate breakers, and I still hate breakers to this day. And as a kid, my mom just thought it was just weird because she was like, yeah, but fuses, fuses you only use once, and they don't always blow, and people sometimes are putting penny behind the fuses. Please don't do that. I'm going to tell you right now, if I ever catch anyone putting a penny behind a fuse, I will personally come to your house and give you a real dressing down, okay? I mean, seriously, don't ever put a breaker behind or a penny behind a fuse, um, or try to shunt out the fuse um, because you just happen to be. I have no spare fuses in the house. 
It's up to you to keep a few spears of the proper size. I want to see you remain in my audience. I want to see you live, okay? So please exercise due care when we're using breakers or fuses. And if your breakers are so many old years old, you definitely will want to have an electrician go through and run a diagnostic on your breakers to make sure that they're still safe. Also, some Federal Pacific breakers. These are really teeny skinny thing breakers. I, I, I've seen these in the Torrington Towers. Are not any longer UL certified because they are too small and they have flashover problems when they open. So if you got those tiny Federal Pacific breakers, you might need to consider replacing them with a modern breaker, which unfortunately means a whole new panel, but that's, it's, if your life, ins if your insurance policy covers for it, I do it. If you can get a fuse panel installed in your house instead, with the appropriate size safety devices in it, get that instead. But if you can't, um, then just get the appropriate size breakers. And also, should you have a whole house, a residual current device, or a CD? Well, you know, that's common in the UK right now, on modern construction. It's not so common here in the US. Why does an RCD is basically a ground fault circuit interrupter, or GFCI? Uh, and here in the U.S., we combine them often with our circuit breakers in our panels. So they actually might be it's a combination breaker and, and uh, RCD. So when you blow, when, when there's a fault in the circuit, it detects it and it opens up the circuit. Um, I mean, that's even important, but it can be very important. Um, RCDs provide that little bit of ground fault protection, which can be very important, especially if Dory was holding on to that dodgy USB charger or her metal shell over USB plug happens to be uh, touching a live mains connection and she happens to be sitting in the middle seat. The system is going to notice and balance the load. It's going to break open just like that. It's going to just totally shut down that circuit. That's what an RCD or uh, GFCI does. And um, it's a great thing, but... Um, as far as overload protection goes, over current protection, nothing beats a fuse. Seriously. I mean, I get plenty of personal stories over fuses have saved my bacon over and above what you expect. We're in the same circuit breaker in the same circuit. Did nothing at all. Um, and I'm not talking about any specialized fuses. We're talking about standard um, plug fuses. And the standard matching breaker or the you know, 15 amps each, and the fuse will go first before the breaker does. Um, that's important for safety's sake. Now, I want to get this wrapped this up because I want to get this sort of video in with less this interview. You know what you should do? What? Why not you marry the two videos together since you were talking about some of the same stuff yesterday and see if we can actually save uh, a lot of in-between steps. Well, because... We need something for today. Oh, okay. Well, so, yeah, you know, you're doing yesterday's video, you're rendering that, and now we're going to update this one. And then this is going to take time to render, right? Of course, we can always skip a few steps. What she's talking about when we say skip a few steps is, is that we can actually, using um, MPEG Stream Clip, we can import this video in, Mark the beginning and end, and the second video clip in, and uh, you know, there's always that question. I, I'm not gonna lie about it. Um, if you're gonna have, and then if you want to put down your contact information and to do that, you can do it, but you have to trim it ahead of time. There's steps, there's steps. Michelle knows how to do it, I know how to do it. Yep, all right, guys, look. I'm going to let you go. Oh, yes, by the way. Um, I didn't go to the soup kitchen today because I wanted to rest my hips and my leg and, and give it a few days to kind of relax so I don't have to do a lot of excessive walking. And I think for the time being, I think my leg was happier. Um, and I'm going to be going to the soup kitchen tomorrow. And I hope it's going to be a good lunch. And technically, I think tomorrow... I'm sorry, Saturday, the soup kitchen is supposed to be open again. 
Yeah, I think so. I think so too. So I'll go down there on because uh, well, how does that work? Flowers is very simple. On the second and third Saturday of the month, the soup kitchen is open. Right. All right. So. We had our first of the two last week, so this is the second time this week. And then you're probably saying the same thing I'm saying, which is, but we still have technically one more week after this. We got two weeks left. Why couldn't it be open on fourth? Another Saturday maybe after this one. Who knows? <laughs> That's a great question. I don't know. I'll have to ask DD. You'll have to ask DD. All right. So for now, let you go. Talk to you soon. Stay warm, stay safe, stay dry, and watch out for cheap Chinese shit. Okay? Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everybody.